Hello everyone, thank you very much for checking out my video. Um, this is Don Exodus, and thanks in particular to all my recent subscribers. If you guys like what you hear and want to hear more or have any requests, definitely let me know. This video in particular is addressing the, um, the compatibility of evolution and God. Now, there are two types of people who are trying to misuse evolution in relationship to God. There are creationists who are saying, I believe in God, therefore evolution has to be false. They're completely misguided in this effort because, again, evolution says nothing about God. And there are also atheists, and this group is often overlooked, who tend to try and use evolution as a means or as a proof of there not being a God. Now, this video is more so to address the latter, because what atheists often don't realize is that evolution is a completely natural theory involving natural processes in an attempt to explain them. Therefore, as such, it makes absolutely no reference whatsoever to supernatural causes or events. Evolution simply doesn't address God, so you can kind of go with that how you will. Now, one thing that people also kind of don't necessarily understand is that the only thing that evolution does specifically rule out is a 100% literal interpretation of the Bible, which anybody who's ever read the Bible hopefully knows. Chapter 30 Leviticus goes on and on talking about how God is a rock, and unless you believe that God is a piece of granite sitting somewhere in Utah, then you already agree that the Bible uses literary, literary, <laughs> literary devices and metaphors. I mean, it's simply fact. It's, it's what the Bible uses. Secondly, something that uses literary devices isn't necessarily false. Okay, the creation story could still be an allegory and be true. It's just not to be read like a science book, and the problem only comes when people try and use it as such. Same thing with science, however. Science isn't meant to explain supernatural events, and when atheists try and use science and evolution in particular to attempt to disprove God, they're not only demonstrating their ignorance on the subject, but they're also using evolution just like the creationists are, in a manner in which it was not intended to be used, and that's simply just not what was planned. Something that's also interesting is, did you know that, um, I'm not necessarily referring to Christianity in general, but even Muslims, extremist Muslims believe that evolution is a ploy by Christians to convert people away from Muhammad. So I think that it's just one of those things, Muhammad and Allah, I think that it's just one of those things that's universal across the board. You know, people who are going to ignore evidence will do so, and there's only so much that you can do. This video and most of mine are actually out to the kind of sliver who are just interested in the subject and have an open mind. Um, Again, about evolution, as I've already said, it doesn't state anything about God. All that it does state, however, is how we came to be in our present form and already on Earth. And quite frankly, if the only reason that you believe in God is because you think, oh, we look complicated, Jesus did it. You know, if that's your only rationale for believing in God, then you never had much faith to begin with, and evolution really shouldn't be a problem with you. Um, lastly, it's, especially to the atheists, it's your persistence and... I guess kind of perversion of the evolutionary theory in an attempt to disprove God again, that is the reason and the, the main motivating factor for many diehard fundamentalist Christians for going against evolution to begin with. You know, we're, we're still, it's 2008 and we're talking about in Polk County people trying to teach evolu or creationism in schools and things like that. If you weren't so persistent in trying to misuse evolutionary theory for something that it wasn't intended for, then we wouldn't be encountering this opposition. And as a result, I mean, it, it's our kids wouldn't be ignorant on science. I mean, it's the entire reason. I mean, it's you have to stop and take a look at what you're doing as well. Because you're also misusing the theory for something that it's not intended for. And you're causing a lot of problems in doing so. Because like I said, when you stop and when you claim that that proves the Bible false and you, you prove that there is no God, then that's when the, the fundamentalist whack jobs wake up and then they start opposing you. Don't get me wrong, the vast majority of them would oppose you anyways, but you're just adding fuel to the fire and it frankly doesn't help and you're being somewhat dishonest about it because you're using it outside of its original context. So, again, evolution and God are completely... Um, compatible with one another, and anybody who tells you otherwise, frankly, I, I don't know what they're thinking. I mean, there are many great biologists, for example, Kenneth Miller, who's one of the most prominent evolutionary biologists, that's also a diehard Catholic. I mean, you just have to approach the thing with a common, or with an open mind and common sense, and see exactly what something is saying and what it's not. In this case, evolution is simply describing how we got in our present form, and says nothing about God. So, Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it.